In this video, I will be going over the progress I made on a puzzle speedrunning game I'm making in the core game engine. For those wondering what core is, I'll explain in a bit, but this is devlog 1 out of 3 outlining my progress on this game. So if you're interested in seeing how I managed to create a fully published game in 3 days, then make sure you subscribe to not miss out on the next 2 videos. But for this devlog, let's begin. Before I start, this video is sponsored by Core, but as I said, more about that later. I began by creating a new Myro whiteboard to brainstorm what game I want to make. I pretty quickly settled on an Escape the Lab idea. Basically, the player needs to complete tasks, go through different puzzles and areas to ultimately escape the lab that they have been trapped in. But to make it more interesting and replayable, I wanted to make it where the player needs to do this as fast as possible therefore making it a speed runnable game. After noting down some puzzles and traps, I created a new core project. Inside it, I firstly changed it from the default third person to first person, as this will make parkour and other tasks easier. This was very simple to do. All I did was delete the existing third person controller already in the game, and dropped in the already made first person template from the core assets, resulting in a lot of time saved. Once getting the basics set up, it was time to start working on something very important the speedrunning aspect of this game. I needed to make a way to time the player during their run. Now, I could just start the timer when the player loads into the game, but that won't be very accurate of their run. This is because some players might load slower than others, therefore abruptly starting the timer before they actually start the run. So instead, my idea was to separate the map into two sections. Section one being a little lobby where the player can run around and prepare for their run, while also looking at the leaderboards and other items and section 2 being the actual lab slash speedrun area. So in the end, I decided to make gateways which the player will run through. One at the start and one at the end of the map. This will start and stop the timer respectively. Because Core doesn't have something like this by default, I ended up making it myself. I began by creating two triggers and checking if the player enters them. This is fairly straightforward because Core has a function for this where it checks if the player overlaps the trigger. And then if that is the case, I call either the start timer function or the end timer function depending on what script I am working in and what door I'm going through. These functions of course stop or begin the timer. Now for the actual timer logic, I made this in a new script and it was pretty straightforward as well. All I do is create variables for the minutes, seconds and milliseconds and then create a timer logic. Now this is fairly simple and you can definitely look it up online and it's pretty much the same in any programming language though the next part was going to be slightly trickier. I needed to make a way to store the player's best time. This is so that I can implement leaderboards and other stuff like such. It's also super useful to know your best time so that you can improve on it, as it is a speedrunning game. Now surprisingly, this was also super simple to make. I ended up making an if statement to check if the player beat his previous time. And using a core inbuilt saving feature, I saved the player's best time stat. I will say the core documentation and API resources were super handy. At this point, the player can run through the start door, which will begin the timer. Then running through the finish door will stop it. And of course, if this time is better than the best score, it also gets updated at the top. I forgot to mention, I also made those UI elements at the top with the UI elements core provides. Now before anyone asks, this saves the player's data, so re-entering the game won't get rid of your best score, which is awesome. Now, before I continue, this video is sponsored by Core. Most of you know what it is, but for those who don't, Core is a free game creation platform that lets you build, publish and play games. You can get started making games right away using thousands of free high quality music sound and art assets with no coding required. But if you like to get more nerdy with it, Core still lets you create your own logic in Lua, just like I have. So if you're interested, check out Core down below. Now let's continue. Next up, it was time to create some puzzles. Now originally, I wasn't going to feature this, but it's part of the development process. I started creating a new puzzle that won't end up making it, but I'll show it to you anyways. I wanted to create a box with a cube and some obstacles in it. And then four different buttons, one for up, down, left and right. And the goal for the player is to use those buttons to move the cube from one end to another. I spent a while trying to create the system, as I'm not so good at Lua. At this point, I very heavily relied on the documentation and API documents. But in the end, I created this, a working system of being able to move the cube with the corresponding buttons. The issue though, is that this cube is a client object and has to be one. 
Now that in itself isn't anything bad, but client objects cannot be collided with. This means you can walk through them and they can go into other blocks, etc. This also means they can't have a trigger, as those rely on colliders as well. Now the reason this is an issue is because I need to be able to see if the cube collided with any obstacles or the endpoint, which I can't do because it's a client object. So in the meantime, I won't be using this puzzle, but I may come back to it later on another devlog and potentially change it up a bit. Next up, it was time to make another puzzle. This one I wanted to keep super simple. I ended up creating a little podium with the button that when pressed would open a door. I also created a little explanation mark using the provided models and materials and made it disappear when the button is pressed. Overall, this is a pretty good task because it forces the player to reach the button and press it and then locate the open door. The opening of the door just uses some maths to move the object. In my third devlog, which is still yet to come, where I start adding polish like sounds and other stuff, I'll create some particles for it and a sound effect of course too. But for now, this will have to do. At this point I was pretty done with doing more puzzles, but don't worry I will do more in the next video. And instead, started working on the first section of the map. I began by creating the area where the player can go through the door and start the course. As previously mentioned, I wanted to create an escape the lab, so I decided to go for more sci-fi futuristic props. Now the great thing about Core is that they have tons of different objects and props that you can use and they keep coming out with more, which is awesome. I ended up using mainly three packs, two sci-fi ones and one military one. For the front section, I began laying some foundations for walls and the ground, and added some details to the front door area to make it look better. I then moved on to the first obstacle area. I decided to go for a parkour course, as that's something that can always be improved by the player to get a better time. I created this block ground and placed an emissive material on it to act as some sort of corrosive material that needs to be avoided, and created this out of this kind of chained metal so that the red part can be seen through them. I placed some blocks so the player can parkour on them, and added some more buttons so the player needs to find the right one. I added some walls and more details to the area. I kept the parkour going and added the final door at the end. I ended up adding more walls and other pieces and the whole level was coming together nicely. So here is a little montage. The final aspect I added was some props to fill the front area. This just makes it look more complete and fits with the theme of the level. I added some rocks and decals to make it look more rough, and I moved throughout the level to add details such as props, banisters and more wall pieces, and everything was coming along great. I ended up adding some decals, but later decided to do that when I polished the game in episode 3. After doing all of that, here is the first level of the game. It's a simple parkour area as mentioned before, but overall I think it looks great. The props definitely add a lot to it and make it look nicer. I even adjusted the sky which was super easy to do to fit the aesthetic. that's all I managed to do on day one. So that is it for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed it make sure to leave a like. To not miss any of my videos please go and subscribe. Check out Core with the link down below and thank you to my Patreons Atomic Punk, TARDIS IT Guy and Smoking Vita. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!